Oh, Peggy and Dan were just fun to be with. You know, always looked at the bright side of things, and you know, we just had a lot of fun together. And she was almost like a sister to me. She started out to be an accountant, and then she got into computers, and then she ended up opening up her own business here at the house called PC Consultings. And she basically set up computers, she sold computers, she took them apart, and she fixed them. This house was her passion. She loved this house. When that house came up for sale, I mean, Peggy was adamant about a lot of things, and she was a determined lady. I mean, if she wanted something, she was going to do her best to her ability to get that. They moved it all the way out here and um, did a lot of work on it, and they basically gutted it down to nothing. Peggy handled all the finances, and she was always concerned about Dan, something happened to Dan, whether he got disabled or if he died. And I said, Peggy, you're bringing in a good income to the household. I said, what happens, you know, if something happens to you first? And Dan and the boys survived. So in 2000, we more than doubled her life insurance. And it was two years later when she was diagnosed with the cancer. Peggy actually found a lump in her breast. I remember when we first found out, they had all of her brothers and sisters, and they had us back, and we were in the kitchen. And they told us all about it, and they had paperwork and stuff we could read, all of that kind of stuff. She just, she kept going like it never happened. We almost lost her a couple of times, but she always rallied back, and she said she wasn't ready to give up. Eventually, she was totally cancer clear. She beat it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> to the maid of everybody, even the doctor. They were gone. Yeah, so the time went on, and about good enough. She took vacation with the kids. We took a weekend off. Went to Chicago and spent a weekend. And, uh, and then back in November of 2004, camp she came back. Uh, it was a very early in the morning in March of 2005. And they had called me, and by the time I got here, she had gone. So, yeah. All the boys were home. My two older ones were home. They were home there for like a few days. So. Some of her mother and other relatives to come out. When your partner for life is gone, you got to take over, and all of a sudden you're responsible to know every move that they make and, and getting them to ball games on time and getting their clothes right and getting the driver's ed. And, and then they're in the band, and chorus. The boys are very active. And uh, sometimes I think it's a little overwhelming for Dan, but he does a wonderful job. He hangs right in there. We got so far in debt credit card. We had four or five hospitals and doctor bills and so forth. A couple months before she died, they were able to borrow the cash value out of the life insurance to pay off the debt. His life insurance has allowed Dan to uh, continue Peggy's legacy to provide college education funding for Caleb and Craig. That's going to be in their minds forever that the life insurance has allowed Peggy's legacy to continue. What makes this story so special is that my client's dreams, in this case Peggy's dreams, because of the life insurance, are able to be fulfilled forever. The house, the college education, and that's, that's what we want. If we can't fulfill our dreams while we're here on earth, the life insurance will allow those dreams to be fulfilled after we're gone.